gentleman, Mr. Lance Henriksen. Yeah. I hope to God I keep you waiting. I was down here eating pizza. Mm. <laughs> Just a couple minutes, no big deal. How are you guys doing in the front here? Woo. You look real serious. Right. <laughs> I feel like a stand-up comic now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys like the movies? You, you Hell yeah! Know? I know that I've heard that you guys know all the lines, so suddenly you would like, you know, certain characters, you'd like their lines, so you'd say, hi. No, you, hi. <laughs> uh, gee whiz, I don't know what to say. I, this movie's been around a long time, and Jim and I have still remained friends, and a lot's happened since then. Avatar has happened, Titanic has happened. <laughs> so much stuff has happened, and, you know, not, not, in terms of money or career, but the growth of a director. And I remember when we did this movie, it was a $12 million budget. Ah, $12 million. And, and Jim would say, I want every dollar on that screen. And he wasn't kidding, because I didn't get paid shit for that. <laughs> but my first residual, I swear to you, I, I think, I don't want to tell you what they paid me for the movie, because it's a little embarrassing, but my first residual came through the door, and it was 50 grand. Wow. And I went, holy shit. Excuse my friend. <laughs> what? <laughs> we better run to the bank with this man. There's got to be a mistake. It has to be a mistake. But anyway, um, when we, we did the movie, it was four months in London at Pinewood. And I remember, uh, I'm going to answer some questions before you ask them. Because I've done this before about this movie. And I'm not going to say the same thing, I promise you, that I've always said, you know, or have said before. God, I'm an honest guy. <laughs> I, have to, I have to live with myself, so i got to say that shit. Anyway. <laughs> but I remember, I remember Blade Runner had come out, and you had that great performance, and then you had Alien, which was... A, another great performance of an android or an artificial person. And I thought, what am I going to do, man? I got the part now. What am I going to do? I was really nervous about what's going to be my contribution. And then I decided, all right, you got to stop that. I mean, because I was torturing myself. You understand, you're an actor. I know you are. Dean. And, and so I, I decided I've got to use what I'm good at and that is being an orphan and, and, and being, a, you know, I had been that, you know, and, and I, I was going to use myself at 12 years old, where there was an innocence. You could look at an adult at 12 and say, I, I forgive you for all the shit you're laying on me, because I'm going to outlive your ass. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fact. Kids do that. Kids are smart. They've got a, a nice sense of, you know, balance. And then the other part was I was going to play it as a black kid in South Africa, I, where I'd already been to South Africa during apartheid. And I thought, if I, as a black kid in South Africa, if I make a mistake, I might pay the ultimate price. And so there was that pressure. And, and all of that stuff was going on in my head when, when I started the role. And there was that innocence, like I say, to the point where I would go walking around London and get completely lost. And I, I was going to get married at the time, and she was with me in London. And, and that relationship was kind of evaporating because I was now a 12-year-old walking around and getting lost. And so that's what I used, and that's what's in the movie. So, and it was a critical moment in my career because I had done a lot of movies before that, but I was serving the script and serving the material. And, I, and, it, and it just made me kind of neutral and kind of... Uh, you know, I, I was there, but I was invisible because I wasn't committed and wasn't doing the kind of work that I had learned in New York at the Actors Studio and with uh, Sandy Meisner's technique and everything else. And I said, I have to do it now because if I don't see it on that screen, I'm done. I'm quitting acting. I'll, I'll make pottery. I'll just do something else. I'll do something real. But it was there, and I'm still an actor. So there you go. That's the end of that story. Was this really the one that, I mean, because you had worked before, but was this the moment that kind of said, okay, I'm a working actor from here on? It's not a working actor, it's my confidence. I, before that, I was doing roles that I did, 
that I call fart catchers. <laughs> the, the main lead in the movie goes, hey, ma. He said, well, ma. And I, and I catch it. I go, that was good. But that was great. You were great. And I thought, you know, I don't want to be a fart catcher. I don't want to be a, 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 a neutral, you know, like a little, a little kind of boat that floats down the narrative. You know? I wanted to play somebody and, and, and really commit to it. And that, that was, what I mean by that is that if that wasn't there for me, I wasn't going to give it up. I really was. That was it. I mean, I, what you see is, is all of that stuff working in, in the minute. <coughs> Just so you're not alone. <coughs> but you, you came to acting pretty late uh, in life. What was, the, what was the thing that flipped the switch for you? Because you, I mean, you, you as you mentioned, well, at age 12. That's, that's the conundrum. If you're 30 yeah. and you start acting and you don't flip the switch, how much longer have you got before they say, uh, the joke is, uh, you know, who's Lance Hendrickson? And then the second part is, uh, give me somebody that looks like him, Lance Hendrickson. <laughs> and then the last part is, I think it is, uh, whatever happened to Lance Hendrickson? <laughs> and and then you don't know where that's going to fall. That could fall any time along the road, you know. Did I answer your question? I, not especially, but it was more entertaining your way. I just... I, I just asked when it was that you kind of realized how does this something... guy work? <laughs> when did you know that you that's what you wanted to bullshit. do? Bullshit! That's how you work. <laughs> when did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Oh boy, you asked the good ones. All right, you want to hear this shit? You want to yeah. hear what made yeah. me want? Yeah. So when I was a kid, I used to run away from home. My mother was a waitress. Uh, she had been married twice, and then now we were living alone, just mom and me. <laughs> she was a waitress, and I shined shoes. But I took my shoeshine money and went to movies on 42nd Street when I was around 8. And I'd sit until 4 in the morning to keep running the movie over and over again. You didn't have to clear the theater. And I saw Kirk Douglas in the big sky and I wanted to be on that boat. And I wanted to be going with those guys because they were great guys and all that stuff. And I, actually the war was over uh, and they had a lot of surplus stores up on 42nd Street. And I used to buy camping equipment for like peanuts, I mean, it was all surplus. And I put it under the seat. <laughs> they don't like this story. Like, they already it out. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what would you like to hear? <laughs> I'll do anything. They don't like camping supplies. <laughs> oh, no, no, the kid, his ears were like, like she was saying, you don't have to listen to this shit anymore. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit down, this is terrible. I, so anyway, I, that was the beginning, and then years later, I worked with Kurt Douglas in, uh, in um, Yellow for Tales from the Crypt, and Kurt Douglas was playing this general, and I was just a soldier in the trenches, and it, but it was full cycle, because everything that I dreamt could happen in life did happen, so that's a big deal. That, that's a kiss. That's a kiss in the dark. You don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know how it's going to happen. But it is a kiss in the dark, believe me. <laughs> it's a good description. <laughs> and and I've, I've, you know, I've had a couple of marriages and a lot of alimony and <laughs> bought a couple of three houses and I'm still here, you know, so it's worked. It's worked. Thank you, old Kirk Douglas. <laughs> we'll get to some, uh, some of your questions here in a second. Talk about the voice work, because you do a lot of uh, voice work these days. We're a team. We go on the road together. Yeah. Uh, so my voice work, I'm work doing out. droid commercials now. I'm the voice of droid. They hired oh. the uh, give me your contract. Oh. And I just happen to have a droid ad. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm looking for a Cadillac commercial. So. There you go. <laughs> now it's not over. It, it, it's never over. You know, I mean, I think if you're in the arts, you can live, uh, you know, Till the end. <laughs> I just finished a movie. I mean, I, I finished this year. I think I've done four, and I'm preparing for a really good one called Ambushed, with uh, Joe Bauer is directing it, and he's. We shot the first 20, 20 pages of it, and now we're going out to raise the money. But I'm playing a guy like Ted Turner, and and he's a billionaire, and he has a problem, 
So it's good. It's really good. <laughs> All right, who's got a question for Lance? Yeah, but first hand up. Yeah, it's there in the middle. Mr. Popcorn. Right behind you. No, the guy right behind you. <laughs> now he's pretending it wasn't him. <laughs> you, with the big thing on your chest, the white thing. You, yeah, yeah. Go for it, baby. We just jumped back five rows, but that's okay. <laughs> Millennium. Um, Chris Carter left a note under my door and up, in, up in Vancouver when I was up there making a movie. And, and I, he said, I'd like to have you on the X-Files. And I, I threw that in the garbage. I didn't want to do X-Files. I didn't want to do television. And then a movie came out called Powder. And he saw that and, and wanted me to meet with him about Millennium. And I thought, my, my agent played a real trick on me. I didn't want to do television. I was dead set against it. Because the last one I did was, I was running through the woods with Mr. T chasing me. <laughs> and I had a gun that was bigger than my foot. And, and then he beat the shit out of me. And I said, that, that's another fart catcher. I mean, what is this? I could have, Mr. T could hardly run. I mean, anyway. So... So, and that was it for television, and I said, well, all right, he sent me the script, and I read it, and I thought Frank Black was just a really intriguing character, and I, I called my agent back, and I said, it's a great script, it's very dark, it's a great script, I could do it, but what is it? And he said, it's television, and I said, oh, man, don't, don't fucking, don't, don't, don't say that, it's television, and so, uh, then I met with him. And Chris Carter has a very seductive persona. You know, he said to me, I, I said, what? How's this going to be television? It's so dark. There's no relief. And he said, uh, the yellow house. I said, what? <laughs> That's the solution to what I just asked you? He said, yes, the yellow house. And I don't know why, but I bought it. And I said, you know, uh, the money sounded good. The, it was going to be, and then we shot for a whole month to shoot the pilot, and at the end of it, I was so exhausted from learning who this guy was, 